secret I greet the announcement of every new DC film installment with the unbridled enthusiasm of Spike Lee at a clan rally, but can I level with you folks? From Marvel to Dark Horse to D fucking C and of course fucking Fox, with 31 flavors of cape shit crowd in the Cineplex, each seemingly longer than the last, to the point that as I sit here in 2019, we have a three hour Avengers, a two hour Logan, and a two hour fucking Joker movie that idiots honestly consider. Oscar bait. Even as a lifelong comic fan and comic creator, I am more checked out than Miranda Cosgrove bending over at a Weinstein birthday bash. So it says something that even harboring such subterranean expectations, every new item of information out of the upcoming Birds of Prey bullshit sounds so bad Nickelback ought to release it as a new fucking single. From its spin-off status out of the actively unctuous Suicide Squad to costumes that look like hand-me-downs from the munchkins in the fucking whiz, I was thoroughly planning to dodge this like, like Clinton at a draft board before anyone involved opened their yawning yap. And then, Tony Juan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor, fresh from an infidelity scandal on set with his co-star, cast wide his hipster beard for a fresh ration of fucking stupid. Quote, what interested me with Pirates of Prey is that it's a feminist film. It is very finely written. There is in the script a real look at misogyny, he said, hand on Huntress's ass as he did so. And I think we need that. We need to be more aware of how we behave with the opposite sex. We need to be taught to change. And then he reminded her that she promised to swallow. Look, Hollywood hypocrisy blooms year round. But if you doubted for a micro minute that the beautiful people pose as enlightened little liberals to retain regular employment, look no fucking further, folks. I know when I'm eager to hear a male feminist rap about respectin' whammons, my anus positively puckers at the prospect of being proselytized to by a Scottish soy beard who cheated on his wife for two decades, with whom he shared four fucking children, by the by, because who better to diffuse my microaggressions than a micro dick? If you read this as anything other than the desperate fumblings of a fuck who'd like very much to be put back on the Playboy Mansion guest list, I've got a bottomless biplane to sell ya. Look, the moment more than one woman adorned the cast for a film in 2019, I reckon most of us were hip to the horse shit to come. But if you thought all the misogyny the movie may address is limited to, say, a foiled sexual assault or physical violence attempt, as would be appropriate for, you know, an action film, think the fuck again, because Obi-Wan adultery was again on hand to specify. Quote, misogynists in movies are often extreme. They rape, they beat women, and it is legitimate to represent people like that because they exist and they are obviously the worst. Yeah, how many of them funded your fucking film there, chief? The twat train rolled the fuck on. But in Birds of Prey dialogues, there is always a hint of everyday misogyny, of those things you say as a man you do not even realize. Mansplaining. It's all in the script in a very subtle way. I found that brilliant! Yeah, pro tip, Soy Walker. If I want to see misogyny, I'll go to a Polygon writer's room. Or the casting catch for your own fucking movie. Look, a hundred and a half other channels will be offering commentary on this twattery, so this really isn't about breaking down Ben Kenobi's bullshit. It's about the broader strategy at play here and why so many comic films have fallen to 40s propaganda film tactics to push a message Lenny Reifenstahl would find on the fucking nose. In fact, let's go back to the 40s for a beat. In the golden age of films, there were in fact two Hollywoods operating concurrently. The left-wing Hollywood of Gene Kelly, Lauren Bacall, and Bogey, tacitly infiltrated by communists for the record, and the right-wing Hollywood typified by John Wayne, David O. Selznick, Ayn Rand, and others, who were called Nazis, when have socialists ever done otherwise after all, but had in fact fought the Nazis, many by testifying in the original House Un-American Activities hearings, which exposed the fascist fifth column in America. These twin ideologies cross sabers on the silver screen. High Noon was cranked out by a commie as a half-assed analogy for a communist standing up to the House Un-American Activities Committee, which never actually happened, by the by. It backfired, being interpreted instead as an exemplar of individualism, and the writer disavowed his own fucking film as a result. John Wayne, by the way, later ran him out of America. Fuck off. By way of reply, John Wayne and Howard Hawks created Rio Bravo, the right-wing rejoinder to High Noon's slack-jawed socialism, where instead of a sheriff sobbing about his fate and asking others for help, he meets the hoods head-on. But after the 60s, the second Hollywood evaporated. The reasons for such are myriad, but Andrew Breitbart encapsulated a few of them in fairly articulate fashion. Golden age of Hollywood. <clears throat> which it wasn't all that long ago. We measured in decades, not mm -hmm. centuries after all. Jack Warner of Warner Brothers was a Republican. Directors, Frank Capra, 
immigrant from Sicily, a Republican and a conservative. The town in those days produced movie after movie after movie that was fundamentally affirming about American life. How did Hollywood go from Republican David Selznick to liberal David Geffen? What well, happened? I would attribute the majority of this to the Cultural Revolution in the, in, in the late 1960s, the end part of John Wayne's career. He no longer had the swagger. He was 60-something years old. The movies uh, were no longer original. They were doing the same hackneyed thing over right. and over and over. Right. And simultaneously, uh, you know, there was a, a youth revolution going on in the country. And while the left was never able to take over the White House, while George McGovern was not able to be victorious, uh, Hollywood was taken over by the left and they've never relinquished it. Look, at a certain point, the right simply gave up on Hollywood. Predictably, year after year, decade after decade, the left became progressively more entrenched to the extent that they now explicitly revise the communist history of Hollywood outright. The Remember the Blacklist event in 1997, amongst all the utterance of the words witch hunt, bore not one mention of the Hollywood Party's Soviet funding. And when commie crusher Elia Kazan was at last given a long overdue lifetime Time Achievement Oscar two years later, prominent Hollywood actors openly protested the award. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Elia Kazan. Million people are going to know that there are people in Los Angeles who will not be silent when a confessed snitch stool pigeon uh, gets an award. Kazan is nothing more than a lowly stool pigeon of the McCarthy area. He'd rather have his own personal attributes to his fancy cars and the hell with his fellow workers. I am violently opposed to everything that was done by the Un-American Activities Committee, and uh, I feel sad about his testimony. Point being, after the 60s, more often than not, the left lost the White House but kept entertainment and news media. Fast forward to 2019 and neither medium has ever been less relevant. With movie attendance at a two decade low and Alphabet News Networks in utter fucking freefall, the party's still stacking the screen with propaganda but it's losing the fucking audience. And so they've expanded into other media. Ever wonder why video games, once a bastion of blowing shit up for its own sake, are suddenly all about sapphic love scenes and socialism? Wonder no fucking longer. They found their next medium and stink piece by stink piece, meme by meme, they're doing the same thing film critics of the mid 20th century did to the declining right in 1960s cinema. Marginalize the merry fuck out of them. Paint them as outdated anachronisms who just can't handle change dust bunnies to be jollied into the nearest waste receptacle. Gamers are fucking done. Gamers don't have to be your audience. Ring a fucking bell? What has this to do with the movies, primarily Birds of Prey, you ask? Well, as the movie-going audience evaporates, what few films people actually do watch require more potent propaganda. Fellow nerds, that means action and fucking comic films must be sublimated to this horse shit. To measure the prospective fortunes of the all-but-guaranteed femflop in question, we first need a genre-specific counterpart. You saw how Rambo Last Blood was roasted at the stake before a single frame of film was seen by fucking critics, but that's that's a badass action film. To fit Birds of Prey genre, we need an action comedy. Fortunately, there's a ready analog, and it's relatively recent. Mere months before Rambo killed the entire cartel trafficking system, there was 
Stuber, an action comedy where the unpronounceable East Indian soy pod from Silicon Valley pretended in unison with the audience that Dave Bautista could ever fucking act. The agitprop press interviews that preceded the film were full body cringe. Quote, I feel like we're at a time where we can talk about masculinity and how it's always been very traditionally defined in a narrow way and how that's led to problems for everyone, for women and for men, the star said. Deftly dodging the most sexual assault these days is done by feminist allies and pricks in problems glasses. The bullshit souffle continued to rise. I felt like it would be interesting to try and talk about that stuff in a traditionally very masculine genre. Not to worry, Nangina. With you at the helm, it's as masculine as a daffodil, though. So had Stuber soar to a box office bonanza? What filmic fucking gold mine awaits herds of prey? Oh, how's 32 million against a 40 million dollar budget sound? Adjusting for promotional costs, of course. Copacetic? Hollywood is in a hell of a spot here. Their bottom line is as red as their politics, yet the power brokers behind them depend on pumping propaganda into every American home on the regular. Yet it's become increasingly obvious their fast dwindling audience simply isn't interested. Stop supporting the beast, my friends. It's not that anyone needs to rise up. You ain't gotta march. You ain't gotta chant. You ain't gotta get out of your goddamn chair for fuck's sake. Just stop supporting these parasites. Hollywood hates you. It's okay to hate them back. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed. You're